Today, I've got my eyes on what's interesting, what's new, what's weird, what's cool, and what is fantastic. This shoe has it all, but not only. We are here at ACMA today and tomorrow, and we will be covering all, every single new motorcycle, every single new motor, engine, whatever the hell there is to be seen and to be found, we will cover it for you. So stay tuned, this is gonna be epic. Hello everybody and welcome to ACMA. We're starting our ACMA trip with the Triumph stand. Here in front of us we have the new Tiger 900 Rally Pro. It has a seat height of 880 millimeters, a new engine with 108 horsepower, which means it is no more A2 license compliant. The ergonomics are new and the electronics are also new. I'm a pretty short rider. I'm 170 centimeters tall, but I can, I can touch the ground and it feels it feels pretty comfortable, I have to say. This is the more off-road oriented version with adjustable front suspension and Brembo brakes. Here we have the standard variant with the luggage system. As you can see, uh, the seat height of this model is 800 millimeters, not 880 like on the Rally Pro. All right, let's take a look at the aftermarket accessories for this bike. As you can see here, the new Tiger can also come with an aftermarket Akrapovic exhaust which in my opinion looks awesome and it definitely sounds awesome. Then right next to it we have the new Scrambler lineup. We have the 1200 XE right here in front of us and the Speed 400 which is going to be the new entry-level Triumph bike right next to the Tiger. Sadly we don't yet have any news on the Daytona, the new, so we'll probably have to wait until spring. We are in front of the new Royal Enfield Himalayan presentation right now. They are doing it right behind of us. And I have to say, the new Himalayan features finally a new engine that produces 40 horsepower and is generally more modern. Also, the brakes have been improved by a lot and the front travel suspension and the front suspension travel has been raised to 200 millimeters. So the motorcycle overall comes in as a way more modern bike and it should fit in line with many other bikes. However, Royal Enfield still say that they follow their own philosophy and that they do not want to fight in this horsepower war of the West. Gregor, our tester and my fellow colleague already did a test with the new Himalayan. However, there's an embargo on it, so we have not yet released the video. However, in the next few days, the embargo falls and we can finally publish our video about it. So stay tuned. This right here in front of us is the new E-Himalayan. It is a concept bike. They didn't talk about many details right now. However, we saw many different things, uh, among which also the battery, which is integrated into the frame of the bike. So that is a very, very new thing. They spoke about a lot of things, including also the durability of the battery um, when it is very cold outside or, in, um, or uh, at very high elevation. We don't have very many statements right now. However, what we can see are very high quality components. We have Nissan front brakes, we have an Erlins rear shock, a golden uh, front fork, so looks very, very good very nice looking swing arm also. The Himalayan is a rather good looking bike in my opinion. Uh, it remains a concept for now, but uh, let's hope to get more news on it soon. All right, everybody, we are here at the Fantic stand right now and look what we got. This beautiful looking super sport. Right now, it is a 125cc bike. In the future, however, it is planned to be released also in bigger CCs. Over there behind this fantastic looking 125 bike, we have a naked bike, the Fantic Stealth it's called. It will be released in 2024 and it features a 125 CC um, engine as well. But this super sport bike is fantastic. I wouldn't have ever expected Fantic to come up and make a bike like this. So big props to them. Talking about beautiful things, look at this. Look at this monster. 
Fantic have finally done it. They found a 300cc two-stroke Italian sourced engine and put it into a hard enduro race bike. The engine, like I said, is made by Motori Minarelli, which is an Italian producer and has already worked uh, in collaboration with Fantic. The engine also features fuel injection. However, I do not know which type of injection it features right now. That is uh, to be announced in the future. Overall, the bike makes a very solid impression on me and looks rather gorgeous in, these classic, in this classic uh, Fantic um, color scheme. Definitely a beautiful bike. All right, everybody, we are here at Wunderlich's stand. They make a lot, a lot of accessories for example, for the new R1300GS. Well, <laughs> long time no talk about this motorcycle, right? Well, they said that they didn't have the time yet to make um, too many accessories. I, I see a lot of accessories, but there are more to be released in the future. As we can see right here, we have bags everywhere. In between the windshield and the dash, we have bags. We have more bags here, you can see the um, luggage systems of different types. You can choose obviously whichever you want. We have many more here in the back, even more bags, even more bags. And then we get to the crash protection, which is also made by them. Looks really solid, makes a good impression. The bike stands really well in front of me, I have to say. Let's swing a leg over it, oopsie. Yeah, I could, I could feel comfortable on this. Damn, I, I wouldn't have expected that. I'm a, I'm a small rider, I have to say. I'm one meters and 70 centimeters tall and I can, I can flat foot it. Really, really cool. Nice. And I think that's about it with regards to the systems for the R1300GS. They make more accessories for different bikes, for example, for the new Ducati Desert X. Look how many bags you can fit to this beauty. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I see in front of me the Zontes image and the Beta motorcycles, and I think we're gonna take a look. See you soon. All right, we are here at Zontes, a new manufacturer that with this year presents new bikes overall. Okay, so we have uh, a new ADV, as you can see here, it has a 500cc engine that produces 48 horsepower. Um, looks really compact, looks actually pretty good with the luggage system, you get it in the two color scheme, either orange or blue. Then on the other side, you have uh, a new plethora of scooters, also featuring the 500cc engine which produces, I think it was 46 horsepower, not 48. Um, you, you get it in three variants. Uh, the, this one, that one, and uh, the last one over there, which is similar to the Honda X ADV. Uh, it, ha it features uh, adjustable suspension, foot packs where you can stand when you decide to take it off-road on a scooter, which is interesting. And also an electronically adjustable windshield. Um, except for the, for the ADV scooter, which features a manually adjustable windshield. Let's come to the most interesting motorcycles, in my opinion, my humble opinion. We have here a new Super Sport. This is a 700cc inline triple, producing 100, about 110 horsepower. This is a really, really good looking motorcycle. It features Brembo brakes, as I can see here, and looks really aggressive. Looks really good. The same engine can also be found in the Zontes Super Adventure, which, uh, like I said, has the same 700cc inline triple. Uh, it is a very modern bike, so it gets a very good, very solid, solid electronics package. It looks overall really, really well, I have to say. All right, everybody, we are at this at the stand with the single most news at ECMA, Honda. Honda has presented so many new bikes. Let's take a closer look. Let's start right off with this beauty of a machine. Holy moly, can you look at this? Wow, wow, the, the Honda Hornet 
Cup motorcycle, 750cc engine, as we all know, from one of the most sold bikes of 2023. Wow, if I could, I would take this bike home with me. But then again, it wouldn't be the only one. Let's take a closer look at what else Honda has to offer this year. So many bikes, so many bikes. Oh yeah, let's start right off with another Hornet. Who would have guessed, who would have guessed? CB500 Hornet, here we have it. Looks um, pretty similar to, an, to the 750 Hornet and I guess you could say that the 750 is the biggest rival of the 500 Hornet. The 500 uh, Hornet has a, an engine with 48 horsepower, um, but theoretically you could get the 750 Hornet A2 license compliant with 48 horsepower and then once you reach the legal age you could just turn it back to its full power. The Hornet actually reminds me also of the CB500. Um, yeah, I think that was all that we need to say about the CB500 Horn uh, about the Hornet 5. Yeah, CB500 Hornet. My bad. Let's take a close look at what I think is the best looking Hornet. Oh yes, would you look at this? Would you look at this? Look at this front. Seriously, this headlight. I don't know. I'm in love. I have to say, I'm in love with this Hornet. It's a CB1000 Hornet. It comes with 150 horsepower and 100 Newton meters of torque. The engine is the 2017 Fireblade engine. Of course, it is not the engine with the most horsepower you could get. Then again, it's a six-year-old engine. Still, I think 150 horsepower is more than enough for many a people. So, this, I have to say, good job, Honda. Good job. Let's leave the Hornets. Let's leave the Hornets where they are and move on to a few other motorcycles that Honda makes. For example, the CL500. This engine, also A2 license compliant. It's uh, the same as usual. It's a pretty good looking bike, I have to say. Very comfortable seating position. It has everything you need to have a good time, seriously. 48 horsepower, relaxed ergonomics, cool looks. You're definitely on the right path if you choose to buy this motorcycle. Another uh, novelty is the NX500, as you can see here. It is the successor to the CB500X. Um, it weighs three kilograms less, has the 48 A2 license compliant um, horsepower and I think that's that. As you can see, it has great lighting, but when it comes to adventure sports, uh, adventure motorcycles, I'm, I have to say my heart beats for the Africa Twin. This year you can get the new Africa Twin Adventure Sports, which comes with a 19-inch front wheel. Would you look at this beautiful color scheme? Ah, it is so difficult to choose. This bike comes only in nice color schemes. I wouldn't be able to choose between this or the red. It is simply too good. But yeah, the 19 inch front wheel, you can take it even more off road now. Overall, a great, great bike, which has been sold many, many times. So there is not much to say. Hey, here you can see it in the beautiful red color scheme. Fantastic. This is not the adventure sports model. This is the normal Africa Twin. So to say, uh, still very good looking bike. All right, we spoke about the Hornets, right? What else does Honda offer? Obviously, fire blades. Fire blades, fire blades, and even more fire blades. Right here in front of us, if we manage to get to it, we have the CBR 1000 RR RSP. Whew. I, I made it, I made it. This is the flagship racing bike you can get from Honda. It is absolutely stunning. Beautiful color scheme. I love the red, white and blue. It comes with the, it comes as standard as the only bike in the world with the electronic Erlins front suspension. As you can see here, this bike, integrated blinkers, integrated indicators into the mirror. This is just fantastic, fantastic. But Honda has decided to not only offer the Triple RSP, I'll just call it that, 
1000 as a racing bike this year, there is something else. Let's take a look. Now, here we are. Honda decided to bring back the legendary CBR 600 double R. Take a look. It still has that underseat exhaust, which in my opinion is the most beautiful way of configuring an exhaust. Wow, this is just stunning. Stunning, a stunning bike. What's new? Now, the bike hasn't been offered in Europe or in the West for five years, I think. Now it comes back with the fully electronic package that the Fireblade 1000 has. So now you have all of the electronic traction control and everything, everything else in the 600cc class. Obviously, you can't just get it in red, but in my opinion, you should all get it in this color scheme. However, who, who, who decides to opt for the black can't be wronged, I have to say. The black looks really good. The, the black definitely makes it look uh, way more stealthy than it should be, in my opinion. But still, the engine remains the same. The front is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And um, overall, a great looking bike. Let me take a seat. I'm a very short rider, so this should be exactly my type of bike. Yeah. I guess it's the usual seating position for a bike. I can definitely already feel the adrenaline ride rising when sitting on this machine. Are you tired of shifting? Are you tired of quick shifter? I have something for you. I have something for you. Honda just presented its new E-Clutch. You can see it on the bike. It is this slightly bulky looking thing which adds two kilograms of weight to the bike, which isn't all that much, I have to say. And it comes in really handy uh, when at a stop, at a red light or whatever. You you will be assisted in your starting. So it works even better than a quick shifter. You could basically say this works like a quick shifter on steroids. So if you're tired of shifting, don't worry, you will never have to ever again. No matter the type of riding and the type of shifting you prefer, give us a like. Give us a like and give us a subscription because we are giving it our all. And you would help us out by simply doing those two things that don't cost you anything. Since we're in Italy, we obviously have to check out Italian manufacturers as well, right? We are here at GV stand. GV, as you can probably guess, they make a lot of bags for motorcycles, all types of bags. You can see it on the Africa Twin here, on the Royal Enfield, also on the Hornet. Here they have them of every single type. The most interesting, however, is going to be this one. This is GV's new 58 liters um, luggage compartment, actually a hard case. And the most interesting fact about it is that you can paint it the way you want. You can obviously buy it in the color schemes you can see here, in white, in green for your Kawasaki, in blue for your uh, Yamaha, uh, in orange for your KTM, or in red for your Honda. But you could bring it to whoever you like, or if you want to do it yourself, you can do it yourself, and you can paint it the color you prefer. You also can see, or maybe not, that this is a, an integrated tail light, an integrated brake light, and a um, blinker integrated into this top case a very a very cool very cool bag by GV is this one where you could theoretically put in your pet your pet can only weigh 10 kilograms though in this bag but still looks pretty cool and would be goofy to see somebody with, with, a, with a bag like this uh, as we've talked about many times, the GS, the GS, the GS, here in the trophy version, you can see GV packed it full with its bags and accessories. You can opt for the hard bags, you can opt for the soft bags, you can get bags of different sizes on one side um, and of a bigger size on the other side, or obviously you can buy them uh, of the same size. And we can also see, because we talked about the windshield on, of the GS, and we can see that GV made a shield themselves to protect you even more from the wind which was a fault of the new GS's windshield solution. Well everybody, show some love for Beta. Who loves Beta? I love Beta. They make 
really good motorcycles and they're Italian, so that, that's a plus for me. Let's talk about the new Alp 4.0. This motorcycle is a legend. This has been around for many, 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 many years. This right here is a 350cc powered um, trial bike, I guess, or well, a off-road oriented bike with only 140 kilograms of weight. You can you can touch, you can you can flat foot it almost. Yeah, you probably can. I can't, but it is really accessible to do basically everything you want from it. It is a staple for all of the boys and girls who love going off-road. And it's not the only variant in which you can get it. You can buy it also in the more coffee racery aesthetic line, which would be the Beta Alp X. Beta says it consumes only three and a half liters of gas on uh, 100 kilometers. So you should, you should be able to go pretty, pretty far with the 11 liters fuel tank capacity. Big news from Suzuki, guys. Big, big news. Look at this beauty. Look at this beauty. GSX S GX. I managed to say it. I hope I didn't fuck it up. But no, no. The name is GSX S GX. It is the legend featured by the legendary K5 four-cylinder. Uh, we already know. Uh, it positions itself between the V-Strom and the GT. So this model is basically a crossover bike um, featuring all of the electronics Suzuki have to offer. You have traction control, the quick shifter, and the most important part is the electronic suspension. You have the Showa electronic suspension, which in our opinion works really, really well. A colleague of mine already tested it and is very, very impressed by it. Otherwise, the handlebars are a bit more touring oriented however the seating position is not too comfortable so you still have a bit of a sporty vibe when seated what else is there to say ah the the bike has already been designed in a way that um, makes it easier to ride with a pillion and also with the luggage systems so that is also optimized what else do you have? You have this beautiful new optic, which I'm uh, really a big fan of, the classic blue colors with the blue wheels. Overall, I think this is gonna be a hit. All right, everybody, right next to the GX, we find the new GSX 8R, which is based on the GSX 8S platform, featuring the 800cc um, twin. The seating position is a bit more sporty, uh, with uh, respect to the 8S. However, the handlebar position is pretty high, so you don't have the crazy super sport ergonomics um, that you're used from a 600, for example. The handlebar, I would, I would say they are almost sport touring uh, handlebars. However, the seating position is pretty sporty, so you have an in-between of both worlds. Otherwise, the engine remains the same. Um, the setup remains the same. It is obviously being a two-cylinder, not a, well, that doesn't have to do with it being a two-cylinder, but with the fact that it is a very torque-heavy engine. It's not a super sport you can take, you can take on it, well, you can take it on the track, but what I want to say is that it remains a very good motorcycle to ride on a daily basis. Maybe some twisty roads, you have lots of torque from down below, so that makes it a very valid option in this beautiful racing aesthetic. Speaking of the GSX 8S, here we have it. Look at it in this beautiful matte gray. Isn't this a beauty? Look at, the, look at these rims as well. They are so nice. This is a really, really nice color. I love it. However, it must be difficult to brush and clean the, um, the matte color scheme. I mean, from my, from my experience at least, it's always a pain in the but guys look at this beauty look at this beauty we have the new xsr 900 gp revealed to us a few days ago look at this beautiful bike with the lower fairing in my opinion it is even more beautiful than without it comes as an optional which is sad but whatever i would just get it and be happy with it also the akrapovic exhaust really 80 styles 
exhaust. Let's swing a leg over it for a second and see how it feels like with these semi-clip-ons. All right, seating position for me, absolutely fantastic. I feel, I feel like I'm riding a super sport, I got, I got to say. Although it is not too aggressive, I can feel I can feel a bit of weight on my wrists, but I think it would be it would be bearable on a long day in the twisty mountains. Otherwise you couldn't yeah. Mirrors also very good. You get a nice screen that is the same. Over there you can see the normal XSR 900, so the non-GP version, in the color scheme of the GP version. Also a very, very good looking bike, very handsome. Personally, I do prefer the old XR900, but the GP is a beautiful bike. The engine produces still the 119 horsepower. It is the CP3 engine sourced from the MT09. Great engine. You can use it on track, on roads, on twisty roads, on straights. Overall, I think a masterpiece of an engine. Let us move on to another very, very popular motorcycle, the MT-09, which will be updated again in 2024, even if it was already upgraded a few years ago. The engine remains the same CP3 with 119 horsepower, which can also be found in the XSR 900 GP we just talked about. Um, the, they did some things with the aesthetics, all right. So, guys, they did the thing. They finally did the thing. They. They put the horn somewhere you can't see, all right? Finally, 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 it doesn't stick out anymore. It is not blatantly in your face, which I'm really a fan of. They also changed uh, the light mask. As you can see, it is now different with two elements, um, two LED elements and a third one, which can be activated uh, optionally. Otherwise, the IMU has been updated, the seating position has been updated, and I think that's about it. Let's see if I can swing a leg over the MT-09 to show you what it looks like. Looks like I am lucky today. Let's take a look at the ergonomics. Definitely changed a bit. I can flat foot it and very comfortable, as it has always been. The handlebar is a bit lower, um, which I am actually a fan of. It feels generally pretty, pretty good, pretty solid. Yeah, I think that's about it uh, when it comes to the MT-09 in its normal version. Let's move on to the SP version, which can be found right here. Okay, the MT-09 SP features a Kayaba fork and Erlen's rear suspension, which uh, make it a very track, not oriented, but a great motorcycle to take on track as well with all of its updates. Um, you can see it has the same blue wheels as the normal MT-09. What distinguishes it from the normal MT-09 is the paint job. The paint job of the 09 SP is inspired by the R1M. Also, you get keyless ride function on the SP. Are you a fan of the new looks? I really, I, I really don't know. I did like the old model as well. Um, I, I don't have, I, I don't think it's nicer than the old one. However, I don't think it is less beautiful than the old one. Let's see if I can, sorry. Excuse me, may I, for a second? Thank you very much. Uh, swing a leg over the SP version as well. Handlebar position, really good. You get, of course, adjustable front suspension and rear suspension. suspension. Of course, of course, of course, in the SP version. Guys, you can flat foot it as well. Position, very, very well. You're, I'm, I, I don't think the, end, the, the handlebars are set too high anymore. I really don't. This feels feels great. You can also, I think you can lean way more on this one. All right. I think that's it. That's it. The MT-09 and for the MT-09 and the XSR 900, let's move on to the Tenere. For fans of the Tenere, this must be peak Tenere. This is still the CP2 powered Yamaha Tenere 700 featuring a lot and I mean a real lot of goodies inspired by Poltaris the goat which stands right behind me 
You can see here, obviously, the, 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 the mandatory Akrapovic exhaust. You have the rear seat um, tank, with the front tank as well, the GPS system. And now you get to buy all of these accessories as well. So you can simply go to your dealership, say, I want a Tenere, give it to me with everything. And you will get this bike. Awesome, awesome, awesome. They tried to put it on this stand right here. And I got to say, it is, the Tenere is a lighter bike when it comes to this class. However, they, they were really struggling, which shows to us how it still remains a bike with a certain weight. And if not used like Paul does, then it might still not be the perfect, perfect bike. But still, I think when it comes to Tenere, this is peak Tenere. All right, welcome everybody to Moto Morini's stand here. This is an Italian manufacturer, very well known in Italy, and they are bringing back the X-Cape, which is gonna be powered by a 1200 V2 engine, Moto Morini, is a they they collaborate with Chinese manufacturers as well and they what's what's new also is that they're gonna bring the same engine you can find in the adventure bike over there into in in this naked bike it's gonna be called the Moto Morini Milano and it's gonna be featured by the same 1200 cc v2 with a lot of grunt on the low end that is gonna be the most important aspect of this bike so even if you ride at I don't know at three four thousand five thousand rpm you can push the throttle you can use the throttle and then you're gonna have this insane torque to feel <laughs> they also said that the bike feels very light and agile and that in the first 10 seconds of moving it you feel basically at home on the bike they said that about the ADV the weight I can't tell you yet, also the horsepower is unknown, um, but it looks, it looks really nice. I can see it in this white and red color scheme, it looks really good. Also this, this Morini Naked, uh, this Moto Morini Naked called Milano is, I would position it in a Neo Cafe racer um, class with this beautiful looking exhaust and yeah more to be announced soon hopefully see you guys look alive look alive new joint the fray with its new motorcycles have a look at the rqi sport model limited to 110 kilometers an hour it uh, belongs to the 125 cc class of motorcycles you get to ride it for about 100 kilometers uh, before having to recharge it we'll come back to the charging topic in a second Next to it, you can also... Ah, wait, wait a second. The bike is really, really, really good when it comes to everything regarding the connectivity. So you have a dash cam in front, I don't know if you can see, and a dash cam in the rear. What do these dash cams do? In case of an accident, they, they upload the last 10 seconds before the accident happened to the cloud, and then you get to have all of the insight into why something pretty bad probably happened. Let's move on to the off-road oriented bike Neo offers. Take a look, looks really, really cool. This bike can also be ridden with, in Europe, the A1 license. It is limited to 45 kilometers an hour. If uh, you open the battery up, so to say, and uh, want to ride it with its full power, then it can reach up to 75 kilometers an hour. Uh, you get to ride it for about 70 kilometers before having to recharge it. And talking about the batteries, let's move on to the most interesting part, in my opinion. The battery swap, the swappable battery systems. Oh, before, let's take a look at this Neo F600, limited to 70 kilometers. It's a uh, pretty good looking uh, scooter, in my opinion. You can ride it for about 90 kilometers before having to recharge it and it has uh, 3.1 kilowatts of power. Now let's talk about a very very interesting topic, the swappable batteries. As you can see here we have Kilat, a, a Singaporean um, a entrepreneur who managed to create a system where you can basically swap and exchange 
the batteries of your bike. You use your phone, which you can, by the way, connect to each uh, single, each and every one of these scooters. You use the app, you uh, scan the QR code, the door opens up, you put in the old battery, you put out the new battery, and you just put it in. And that's it. Easy as that. Really, really, really cool and makes everything, makes life generally way easier when it comes to riding um, e-bikes. Also, he said to us that you can load up to, hold, hold tight guys, hold tight. You can load up to 250 kilograms onto this bike. So you can basically load your entire family and pizza for everyone and your dog and you will still be fine. That is awesome, that is awesome. They also thought about many, many different aspects of this bike being used for couriers, for example. And he also showed to us the battery, which is fixed with a few tubes uh, on the inside. So when riding over bumps, over humps or whatever on uneven terrain, you won't have your battery disconnected, which makes life much more easy, all the more in Southeast Asia. All right, that was it. I hope you liked it and let's move on. What do you bleed? Green? Blue? Red? Orange? Well, we're in front of Kawasaki's stand and to be specific, we are in front of the very new Ninja 500. Kawasaki has launched two new motorcycles, two new Ninjas, no actually one Ninja and a uh, naked version of this, the Z500. You can get them both in normal trim or in SE trim. The SE trim uh, features a TFT dash and a keyless ride system and also these special colors as you can see right in front of me. The engine is uh, rated at 46 horsepower so in Europe fully A2 license compliant and is a general upgrade over the Z and Ninja 400 um, of last year. Let's move on and check out all of these bike Kawasaki features here. Right here in front of us we have the new hybrid EV uh, Z7 which combines a, an, uh, an ele a hybrid engine together with an internal combustion engine. That means that you can ride it for about 12 kilometers uh, fully um, in electric mode before having to use the normal combustion um, engine. This could be very nice in uh, anywhere you want to be very quiet, maybe in the city, maybe at night, maybe you don't want to wake your neighbors up. And the same uh, as this, so the HEV-Z can also be found in the HEV Ninja, which is right next to the, oh, we got uh, quite a lot of people here. Uh, we have already made some reviews about it. If you want me to uh, make the English version of the German video featuring the HEV Ninja NZ, let me know in the comments down below. Here you can see it, it is, it is a true Ninja, um, looking very Ninja-ish, if I dare say. And what else do we have? Oh, right over there, exactly. I was talking about the new 500 engine Kawasaki offers, and they offer it, like I said, in the Ninja version, but also in the naked version, so the Z. 500. You can see it here, it has the same horsepower, 46 horsepower, about 44 Newton meters of torque. Um, it's a pretty lightweight bike and in the SE trim, like I said, you can get it with a TFT dash and keyless ride. Should be a pretty good bike, should be a pretty good bike for everybody who wants to begin uh, riding a bike or simply doesn't need too much power. All right, let's move on and see what else Kawasaki has to offer this year. Nice. So many beautiful bikes, so many beautiful bikes. All right, look at this beautiful H2. Wow, 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 wow. This is an homage, as probably many of you can tell, um, of, of Mick Grant, legendary rider who won uh, multiple events. Definitely a beautiful color scheme. Damn. Oof, makes me dream, makes me dream. All right, let's move on. We have here, we have here the new ZX-6R in all of its versions. 
Kawasaki returning to the 600cc class with this legend of a bike, Ninja ZX6R, still featuring a four-cylinder in engine 600cc, best suited for the race track. Um, but you don't have to choose this color option this year, as all of the Ninjas or most of the Ninjas come in a very, very unique color scheme. Let's check it out, let's check it out. Isn't, isn't it beautiful? Look at the 40th anniversary Kawasaki legendary blue, white, green color scheme on this ZX-6R. Absolutely stunning. Well, talk, speaking of ninjas, how could I not mention the ZX-10R? Absolute bang. Wow, look, look at this front. It's already looking at me all mean like, oh, I want to kill you. Oh, yes, I want to kill you so badly. I know you do, I know you do, that's why I don't ride it. There's probably a lot more experienced people out there who could tame this beast. I have yet to try it out. But in this color scheme, I have to say, man, so many beautiful bikes this year and in so many beautiful color schemes. Very, very, very good looking. Very mean front also, very mean front. However, now I, I don't want... I don't want you guys to think that I'm the biggest noob there is, but <laughs> I, I really, I really love the ZX4R, and and I, I'm a big, a really big fan of it. This I could see myself sit on for an entire, entire, entire day. Look at these aggressive slip-on, clip-ons. Sorry, it is, it is a, it is a racing bike. You have to say there's just nothing not racy about it. Components, very. Very, very top-notch, have to say. Also, in this beautiful color scheme, it makes me dream. Very aggressive seating position, as usual for a racing bike. Adjustability everywhere. Overall, simply a great bike. Seat height, I mean, it's a super sport, so seat height. Uh, pretty low, I can flat foot it. Really comfortable for somebody my size. And if I could take something to the track, I would take Probably this for the first few sessions and then move up to the 600cc class. Before concluding this video, oh, here's the Ninja 500 in a beautiful black uh, color scheme. Also, very, very fair choice in my opinion. I'd go for a green. Black's also always very nice. Um, here is the last Ninja. <laughs> so many Ninjas, so many Ninjas. You have, I don't know, a plethora of Ninjas on the market today. This is the completely electric Ninja E1, uh, built for what's in Europe called the A1 category. It uh, has nine kilowatts of power, so about 15 horsepower. Uh, you can ride it um, without any problem. Still looks very mean. I mean, for a 125, it's got the aggressive front looks of a, of a Ninja. And oh, what I, have to, uh, what I forgot to say is that each Ninja features the same, uh, this year each Ninja features the same headlight as the ZX-6R, the Le LED um, technology, great thing, great thing, Mo very, very modern look. And well, if motorcycling isn't all that you do, but well, we are heading into winter, but still, look at that beauty, that makes me dream as well. That makes me dream as well. <laughs> I want to conclude the Kawasaki part of EICMA and let's move on, see what else there is to explore. Zero times zero is still zero. We're here at Zero Motorcycles stand. They have four new motorcycles to offer for 2024. They come in A1 license compliancy, which for Europeans is relevant, and the other ones for A2. Um, let's talk about them more in depth, all right. Let's first talk about the A1 license compliant motorcycles. You have the Zero S right in front of us. It is by far not a cheap bike for it. I mean, you can ride it with your normal car's driver's license, yet it costs you 17,000 euros. A bit more actually, but yeah, about that. And it comes with this battery. Um, here you can see what type of model you have, if it's the A1 model or the A2 model. Now, although this bike is an A1 compliant bike, it has 60 horsepower. 
And no, I did not misspell. 6T, not 16, 6T horsepower. How does that happen? How does that happen? Well, they told me, basically, you have this power not for the entire time. You can use this motorcycle. You have it for about half an hour or something like that. I don't know the exact time, but it should be something uh, in line with 30 minutes where you basically get to enjoy a very, very strong motorcycle without having the license for it, which in my opinion is great. Still, it costs you 17,000 euros. Let's swing a leg over it. It looks very accessible. It's a naked bike. You get to see the battery. It is pretty huge. I can, I can flat foot. Yeah, I can flat foot it with, with both my feet. So very cool. Ergonomics, very nice. St very, I would say pretty standard for a naked motorcycle. You have a nice TFT dash. This bike is pretty heavy though, as tends to be the case with electric motorcycles. We have over 220 kilograms of weight um, ready to ride. All right, like I said, so you can ride this basically always. And now you have the upgraded model, which is the Zero SR. So let me repeat that. The Zero S is A1 license compliant. The Zero SR is A2 license compliant. This engine has, oh, this engine, this motorcycle has 10 horsepower more. It has 70 horsepower in total. It weighs about the same as the other ones. And they both come in 84 ADV form as well, which I'm going to show you soon. Um, the difference between the A1 model, the Zero S and the Zero SR is as you can see in the battery. This one has a 15.6, the other has a 14.4. And uh, what else has to be said? Oh, it has to be said that Zero actually reduced all of the listing prices of their bikes in 2024, which is definitely not a market trend uh, we saw in the last years, um, which I find generally great. but. Before concluding this video, let's take a look at the ADV models right over there. All right, all right, all right. We have the Zero DS over here, which is like the Zero S model, but in ADV form. Has beautiful paint job. I like this beige uh, seating position. Let's take a look. Yeah, very accessible, definitely. Very accessible. You have. Um, a charging possibility right here, 12 volt. Actually, pretty good. This bike weighs 10 kilograms more uh, than um, the other naked bike based on the same platform or on the same battery. And here you have the fully kitted out Zero DSRX Black Forest. Now, the Black Forest model is the model featuring all of the cases and all of the other accessories you can possibly buy. Look at this windshield. From an aesthetic point of view, I think it's a pretty good looking bike. The battery is huge, but doesn't bother me all too much. However, the price is uh, pretty steep, but still, I mean, yeah. It is an A1 license compliant bike, right? But it's probably not gonna be the bike a 16 year old is gonna buy. I mean, who knows? I'm, I don't know, but maybe, maybe there are some, but definitely not most of them. Maybe somebody, maybe an adult that says, I'm too lazy to get my A license, just says, you know what? I really like electric motorcycles. Let me get this bike and enjoy it. It has, like I said, 60 horsepower in it, 70 horsepower in its A2 version and 60 horsepower in its A1 version. But let me repeat, you don't have all of that power all the time. You only have that for about half an hour before it drops. So that was everything that I had to say about the new Zero lineup. I hope you like it. All right, everybody, welcome to one of the best news Ducati could have given us in 2023, the new single cylinder hyper motard 698 that's what they call it however the engine is only 659 cc's big how much horsepower 77 and a half horsepower at close to 10,000 rpm 10,000 rpm for a single cylinder that ain't bad that ain't bad however 
By getting the Terminioni exhaust, you can get 11 more horsepower, pumping that number up to 88 horsepower at always 10,000 RPM. Uh, Newton meters, how many, how many, how many? 63, that's what the Ducati Hypermotard Mono has to offer. This must be such a fun bike to ride on twisty roads, on your favorite road, on the supermoto track, whatever. How tall is the bike? It's 905 millimeters of seat height. Might make you feel that you can't buy this bike if you're below 1 meters and 85 or 1 meters and 80 centimeters tall. However, I, can, I, can't, I can't flat foot it, that's for sure. However, I do still think that this is an accessible height, even for me, which makes my heart jump because I would love to own this motorcycle. One foot on the ground, I have to, yeah, of course, I have to move my weight a bit, but still I don't feel too uncomfortable. And the bike only weighs 151 kilograms, which is pretty light. The price, you may ask? The price starts from 12,900 euros, which in reality isn't all too much, considering what KTM asks for its, for, for this uh, bike's rivals, right? So in the end, it depends on the bike you want to get. Ducati offers some serious components on this bike. All right, so we have the 698 single cylinder motorcycle with these beautiful, beautiful wheels in this beautiful black, black red color scheme. I would definitely opt for this. And guys, can, can we give Ducati a round of applause for the under seat dual exhaust? Isn't this beautiful? Finally, 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 somebody has returned to the good old dual exhaust. It's simply beautiful. I really like it. Many might say, oh yeah, but it, it adds unnecessary weight. Yeah, right, I love it, I love it. Look at the aesthetic. I really, really love it. Under here, you can see the components, really high quality overall. Seat height is great. Over there, you can see the Ave um, uh, version of the bike with the Terminioni titanium exhaust, which is overall a very good looking bike with the two color uh, wheels, black and red. I must say I like it, but I think I, think I like the cleaner version uh, better than this one. Anyways, this version doesn't have more horsepower, it doesn't have more torque. Um, still, really good, really good. Ducati, I applaud you, I applaud you. And so do many of you, let me know. I don't know, I, I don't yet have a Christmas present for my girlfriend, but I think I might have just found one. Hopefully, if, if I give this to her, she will finally begin to share my passion for motorcycling. Isn't this beautiful? Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> I do like me some good helmets that protect my face from whenever I decide to kiss the tarmac. Arai is presenting three new helmets this year. Uh, I mean, three new helmets. What the hell am I talking about? Is this, this, this is the same helmet. It's the Tour X5, uh, the successor to the X4. And it comes in three different styles. That's what I wanted to say, excuse me. You have the on-road style, the adventure style here, and the off-road style. Now, what did they upgrade? What did they update in this version? You have these easier um, elements. You have these easier to remove elements on the inside. Uh, you have a way easier implementation of your Sina or uh, whatever communication system you decide to use. Um, in the past, it used to be a bit tedious to install them. Now it's gotten way, way easier. Then what else do you have? You have improved ventilation systems here. Uh, you, you just have to use this to gain massive ventilation inside your helmet. Same goes for this. And um, on the back, you have one as well. Let's show you here. Right. The the price of the helmet has yet to be announced. I couldn't tell you anything. It's an Arai helmet, so I guess everybody knows more or less what they ask for their helmets. However, you don't only get the helmet in these three colors. These are the first colors to be launched on the market. So in the next few months, you will see them. But then in the course of the next year, 
you will be able to buy the helmet in all of these variants, depending on a motorcycle you ride. So, for example, this is a very good looking helmet for your Africa Twin. Same goes for the one over there. Sadly, there's some people right in front you can't see. Uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful visor. I would definitely, knowing myself, opt for something like this, because why the hell not? Oh, now you can see it. Maybe this works very well with your Africa Twin as well. Uh, otherwise, Cosmic Red would be great for us at 1000 PS. Look at the colors of the logo. Why the hell not? Should be, should work really, really well. Otherwise, just pick your poison. Seriously, they're all great. And that's basically everything I have to say to the new RI helmet. Have you ever wanted to piss off everybody in your neighborhood? Have you ever felt that deep desire to just let your neighbors hear what kind of awesome motorcycle you're riding? I guess then this is the best place you can be right now. We are at Zard's place where they showcase basically all of the exhaust systems they got. Over here on the wall you can see the plethora of exhaust. They they showcase, god damn it, look at this beauty, holy hell. Panigale V2 Zart exhaust. This is an engineering masterpiece, god damn it. But I have to say, if you love your neighbors, I don't know if I could recommend a Zart. Jokes aside, they are great exhaust manufacturers. We here in Italy know all about them. I bet the sound you get out of a street triple, of that beautiful triple, or of that V2 of the Scrambler Ducati, must be amazing. But what I'm actually afraid of is to hear this exhaust on that bike. On a Harley Davidson. A Zard exhaust. I don't know if my ears could survive that. Look at this beautiful solution. Wow. Fantastic looking, I have to say, but I guess I would need lots and lots and lots and lots of earplugs to survive this exhaust on a bike like that. Guys, so many beautiful bikes. <laughs> what the hell? What the hell? What the hell is this, guys? What the hell is this? Wow, Krapovic, you really outdone yourself. Holy shit, and look at all these. Oh my God, full carbon fiber, a Krapovic exhaust, which probably costs, I don't know, more than whatever money I have on my bank account. Everything full carbon. Now this is an iced out motorcycle. God damn it, God damn it, wow. Wow, nothing more to say, but wow. I don't know if you've heard, but there's a new Duke. There's a new Duke, guys. KTM is now offering a 990 Duke with a new 990cc engine producing 123 horsepower. The bike weighs 190 kilograms wet and with a full tank you can ride for approximately 300 kilometers. You have a new uh, adjustable suspension in the front. It is a, a split fork where you can adjust the preload on one side and the compression on the other side of the bike. You have a you have 180 um, tire, rear tire, which is different from the 1290 Duke, obviously. The bike appears rather slim when looking at it. S swing a leg over it. It should be really compact. Yeah, I feel right at home. This, uh, this is great. Very comfortable seat, I have to say. I can, I can Barely flat footed with both feet, but definitely with one foot. Um, as you know, I'm not the highest rider, so I definitely do feel at home. Otherwise, what else is there to say? You have a new swing arm, um, which looks pretty good. Oh yeah, they also hardened the um, frame, which is always a great thing to do. The same goes for the swing arm. Uh, for more traction, so now you get more traction. Also, KTM features this electronic package where the customer can try it out for the first 1,500 kilometers, and then the customer gets to decide which electronic feature he or she wants, 
and can then buy exactly that and not the rest. Otherwise, oh, about the suspension, you can set it with, uh, you have five clicks. Um, and you can set it based on those. It is a WP Apex uh, suspension, which should work really well. Let me know what you think about the new Duke and in particular about the new headlight in the comments down below. See you soon. Wow, I'm stunned. I'm completely stunned. This is another beautiful Italian machine. Have a closer look at it. This woo, dynamic floor looking kind of crazy. All right, we have a 900cc three-cylinder uh, engine which produces 124 horsepower fitted with this beautiful Terminioni exhaust. The, um, the tire dimensions are 21 inch in the front, 18 inch in the rear. The suspension components are from Saks. You have 220, no, 210 millimeters of suspension travel. Overall, just a beautiful aesthetic. Now, this is the LXP, they call it the Lucky Explorer. Um, Edi Orioli Edizione Limitata, which means only 500 of these will be made and sold. However, M MV Agusta probably don't plan on just using this engine 500 times and that's it. So we are probably gonna see this engine featured in a variety of uh, motorcycles in the future. Obviously the suspension is fully adjustable in the rear and in the front and otherwise it is simply a very very beautiful ADV overall. All right everybody we are here in front of the Motorex stand and would you look at this, would you look at this, isn't this fabulous? I, it looks so cool. I, I'm gonna have to show you how this works from the other side because from here you can see this beautiful screen but from the other side you cannot see anything. But guys, let me talk really quick about the chain loops that Motorex offers because we all know that chain loops have to find a compromise between being liquid so that it penetrates the chain but not being too liquid because otherwise dust will stick onto it. So, what does Motorex do? They have different chain loops for each type of riding you do. And all you have to do is say, okay, all right, I ride mainly on the road. I'll buy the chain loop for on-road use and just use that. This way, you will have the perfect compromise for your bike, be that off-road, adventure, road, or racing. But let's take a look at what this looks from the other side because it's just, it's just too cool. I find it way too cool not to have a look at it. Wow, beautiful bike, by the way. Wish I could ride that. Look, if you look at that, if you look at that, you, you, you don't see anything. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, that is what technology is all about. <laughs> I imagine myself back in my high school days, sitting right behind this wall with my, <laughs> with my cheat codes for the exam, the teacher not seeing anything, I could just write everything down while he sees a random wall of, of things. <laughs> Anyways, that was that. Make sure to use the right chain loop and I'll see you guys soon. Guess who just made a rival for Aprilia's RS660? <laughs> yeah, you're right, Aprilia themselves. Look at it, it's the 457, Aprilia's newest and, mo and youngest motorcycle. And looks stunning to be honest, look at the LED lights. Very, very beautiful, this color scheme. Also great, this engine produces exactly 48 horsepower, which is in Europe the maximum you can ride with an A2 license, so fully A2 license compliant. You could also get the RS, the RS660 in the A2 license um, variant. However, this one is completely made just for that. We get to see, we see from here that there will be a quick shifter uh, on this bike looks great we have a tft uh, display also a great great color scheme with these red rims um, definitely targeted at the younger audience and for me if i were 18 right now this would be a very strong contender all right everybody have you ever been to passo stelvio passo dello stelvio Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place. And right here we have the new Moto Guzzi Stelvio. The Moto Guzzi Stelvio is based on the V100 Mondello and features its uh, same 90 degrees uh, transversely mounted V2 engine. It has 113 horsepower. If I'm 
not mistaken. Otherwise, you have 170 millimeters of, tra uh, of travel in the front. You have Brembo brakes. It's a very comfortable motorcycle. It has a car and shaft and um, also the tire dimensions are 19 inch and 17, 19 inch in the front and 17 inch in the back. Let's take a look at the model I can sit on to check out the ergonomics. They should be very comfortable. This bike is definitely designed to go on long tours and less so um, for the use in off-road. Sorry, uh, just a second. Um, the, I can flat foot the bike with one foot. It doesn't feel heavy uh, at all. The handlebar positioning is very comfortable. I, I have it in my hand, nothing bad to say. Also, this type of uh, motorcycle is, no, this type of transmission is known to be the most comfortable on long trips. So there you have it, Moto Guzzi's Stelvio based on the V100 Mandello. Who doesn't love a collaboration between two legends? Between two icons, right? Who would say no to a collaboration between Walt Disney and Vespa? Have a look, have a look. Walt Disney is celebrating their uh, 100 years anniversary and they decided, and why the hell not, I dare say, to celebrate this with a new Vespa uh, model, totally dedicated to Walt Disney. Now Mickey Mouse uh, isn't really celebrating his uh, 100th birthday, however they decided to um, release this interesting looking edition of a Vespa. Anyways, I'm a big fan of it. Let me know if you are too or if you don't really like the color scheme. See you! Whoa, guys, we did it. We survived. We survived ECMA 2023. It's been a pleasure. It's always nice to be here. Ah, my feet hurt. I don't know how many kilometers we went by foot here on the, in these two days. Anyways, it was a beautiful, beautiful town time. <laughs> now, all I need from you guys, and it doesn't cost you a penny, is to like this video, to subscribe, and to let me know in the comments down below what you want to see. We at 1000 PS have daily uploads on the German channel. We have over 5,000 videos in our archive. All I need to know is what you guys want to see. And how do I know that? by you subscribing and liking this video and by you leaving a comment down below and telling me I want to see X, Y, Z. So do that. If our channel grows, we can publish more videos and even better videos, which is in the best interest of all of us. Thank you very much and see you soon.